well, first of all, you have an amazing blog that people should check out, but you also have this, uh, in that blog, a set of predictions. It's such a cool idea. I don't know how long ago you started, like three, four years ago. It was um, January 1st, 2018. 18, yeah. And I made these predictions and I said that every January 1st, I was gonna check back on how my predictions yeah. had- That's such a great thought experiment. For 32 years. Oh, so you said 32 years. I said 32 years because it's still, that'll be January 1st, 2050. Yeah. I'll be, I will just turn 95. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> nice. And, so, you know, so. Uh, and so people know that your predictions, at least for now, are in the space of artificial intelligence. Yeah, I didn't so, say I was going to make new predictions. I was just going to measure this set of predictions that I made because yeah, I was sort of I, I was sort of annoyed that everyone could make predictions they didn't come true and everyone forgot. So yeah, I said well, I should hold myself to a higher standard. Yeah, but also just putting years and like date ranges on things. It's a good thought exercise. Yeah, like and like reasoning your thoughts out. And so the topics are uh, artificial intelligence, autonomous vehicles, and space. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if it, we could just go through some that stand out, maybe from memory, I can just mention to you some, let's talk about self-driving cars, like some predictions that you're particularly proud of or are, are particularly interesting uh, from flying cars to uh, the, the other element here is like how widespread the location where the deployment of the autonomous vehicles is. Uh, and there's also just a few fun ones. Is there something that jumps to mind that you remember from the predictions? Well, I, I think I did put in there that there would be a um, dedicated self-driving lane on 101 mm -hmm. by some year, and I think I was over-optimistic on that one. Yeah, I actually, yeah, I actually do remember that. But you, uh, I think you were mentioning like difficulties at different cities. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, 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 so Cambridge, Massachusetts, I think, was an example. Yeah, of, uh, like in Cambridgeport. You know, yeah. I, I lived in Cambridgeport for a number of years, and you know, the roads are narrow, and uh, getting getting anywhere as a human driver is incredibly frustrating when you start to put and and people drive the wrong way on one way streets. There, it's just. Uh, so your prediction was driverless taxi services operating on all streets in Cambridgeport, Massachusetts, in. Uh, 2035. Yeah, and that may have been too optimistic. You think so? Uh, you know, I, I've gotten a little more pessimistic since I made these internally on some of these things. So what, uh, can you put a year to a major milestone of deployment of a taxi service in, um, in a few major cities? Like something where you feel like yeah, so so autonomous so, vehicles so, are so, here. So, so let's let's take um, the grid streets of San Francisco mm -hmm. north of Market. Okay. Okay. Um, relatively benign um, uh, environment. The streets are wide. Um, the major problem is uh, delivery trucks stopping everywhere, um, <laughs> yeah. which has made things more complicated. Um, a taxi system there with um, somewhat designated pickup and drop-offs, unlike with Uber and Lyft, where you can sort of get to any place and the drivers will figure out how to get in there. Um, we're still a few years away. I, you know, I live in that area, so I see, you know, the self-driving car companies, cars, multiple multiple ones every day yes. out there at cruise. Um, uh, uh, Zooks less often, uh, Waymo all the time, um, different and different ones come and go. But and there's always a driver. There's always a driver at the moment. Although I have noticed that um, so sometimes the driver does not have the authority to take over without talking to the home office because they will sit there waiting for a long time, yeah. and clearly something's going on where the home office is making a decision. Um, That's fascinating. So they're, you know, and and so you can really? see whether they've got their hands on the wheel or not, and and it's the incident resolution time that tells you, gives you some clues. So what year do you think, what's your intuition, what date range are you currently thinking San Francisco would be autonomous uh, taxi service from any point A to any point B without a driver 
are you, are you still, are you, are you thinking uh, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now? Certainly not 10 years from now. It's going to be longer. If you're allowed to go south of market, way longer. Um, and, and unless it's re-engineering of, yes. of roads. Um, By the way, what's the biggest challenge? You mentioned a few. Is it uh, the is it the delivery trucks? Is it the edge cases, the computer perception? Uh, well, computer well problem, here's, here's a case that I saw outside my house uh, yes. a few weeks ago, um, about 8 p.m. on a Friday night. It was getting dark. It was before the solstice. Um, um, it was a um, cruise vehicle come down the hill, uh, turned right, um, and stopped dead, covering the crosswalk. Why did it wow. stop dead? Because there was a human just two feet from it. Mm -hmm. Now, I just glanced. I knew what was happening. The human was, uh, was a woman, was at the door of her car trying to unlock it with one of those things that, yeah. you know, when you don't have a key. Yes. The car thought, oh, she could jump out in front of me any second. Yeah. As a human, I could tell, no, she's not going to jump out. She's busy trying to unlock her. She's lost her keys. She's trying to get in the car. And it, it stayed there for... Until I got bored. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so the, the human driver in there did not take over. But here's the kicker to me. A guy comes down the hill with a stroller. I assume there's a baby in there. And now the crosswalk's blocked by this cruise vehicle. Mm -hmm. What's he going to do? Cleverly, I think, he decided not to go in front of the car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he funny. went, but he, he had to go behind it. He had to get off the crosswalk, out into the intersection wow. to push his baby around this car, which was stopped there, and no human driver would have stopped there for that length of time. Um, they would have got out and out of the way. And that's another one of my pet peeves, that safety is being compromised for individuals who didn't sign up for having this happen in their neighborhood. Yeah, but... Okay. Now you can say that's an edge case, but yeah. Well, I'm in general not a fan, which uh, of uh, anecdotal evidence for stuff like this is one of my biggest problems okay. with the discussion of autonomous vehicles in, in general. People that criticize them or support them are using edge cases. Okay, uh, uh, so, are so, using anecdotal so, so, evidence. So, so let, me, let me. But I got you. You, you know, you know, your question is when is it going to happen in San Francisco? I say not soon, but not it's going to be one of the. But where where it is going to happen? is in um, uh, limited domains, uh, campuses of various sorts, gated communities, where the other drivers are, 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 are not arbitrary people. Um, they're people who know about these things, they, they, you know, it's been warned about them, and at velocities where it's always safe to stop dead. Yeah. Um, you can't do that on the freeway. That I think we're gonna start to see. Um, and they may not be shaped like, <coughs> you know, current cars. They may be, you know, things like, you know, May Mobility has those things and various companies have these. Yeah, I wonder if that's a compelling experience. To me, it's always important. It's not just about automation. It's about creating a product that, like, that makes your, it's not just cheaper, but it makes your, this fun to ride. Uh, one of the most, one of the least fun things is for a car that stops and, like, waits there's something deeply frustrating for us humans for yeah. the rest of the world to take advantage of us as we wait. But um, think about, uh, you know, not you as the customer, but someone who's in their 80s in an, uh, you know, in a retirement village yeah. whose kids have said, you're not driving anymore. <laughs> yeah. And this gives you the freedom to go to the market. Well, That's a hugely beneficial thing, but it's a very uh, few orders of magnitude, less impact on the world. It's not, it's just a few people in, in a small community using cars as opposed to the entirety of the world. Uh, <laughs> I like that uh, the first time that a car equipped with some version of a solution to the trolley problem is uh what's niml stand for like not in my life not in my life i define my lifetime as, as up 2050 2050 <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh you know I, I ask i ask you when when have you had to decide which person shall i kill um no you put the brakes on and you break as yeah, hard as you can you, you know i mean you're uh, not making that decision <laughs> it is uh you know i do think autonomous vehicles or semi-autonomous vehicles do need to solve the whole pedestrian problem that has elements of the trolley problem within it, but it's not. 
Yeah, well, so here's, and I talk about it in one of my, the articles or blog posts that I wrote. Here's, here's, here's and, and people have told me, I, one of my coworkers has told me he does this. He he tortures autonomously driven vehicles and pedestrians will, yeah. will torture them. Now, you know, once they realize that, you know, putting one foot off the curb makes the car think that they might walk into the road, kids, teenagers will be doing that all the time. They will. I, by the way, one of my, and it's a whole nother discussion because my main issue with the robotics is HRI, human robot interaction. I believe that robots that interact with humans will have to uh, push back. Like they can't just be bullied because that creates a very uncompelling experience for the humans. Yeah, well, you know, Waymo, before it was called Waymo, discovered that, you know, they had to do that at, at four-way intersections they had to they had to nudge forward to give yeah. the cue that they were going to go because yeah. otherwise the other drivers would just beat them all the time 